Hello, welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm your host, Morala DeVoe. Our mission at Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the times you need it most. And today we have a show that is gonna be highly educational for most of you, or for many of you, because it's actually a topic that I don't think a lot of people are informed about, and it's about chloramine in our municipal water. And actually in our viewing area in Chendon County, the majority of people are actually already um, have chloramine in their water, in their drinking water. So this is something that you might want to listen to and uh, see what you can do about it. And actually only those viewers in, in our viewing area who live in Burlington don't have chloramine in their drinking water and we're going to be talking to you directly as well. So my guest today is Alan Powell. Welcome, Alan. Thank you, Morella. You're the uh, primary activist in uh, chloramine in these parts, it seems. Pretty much. So they, everybody see, thinks of you as the go-to person to mm -hmm. know what's been going on in Vermont for the last six or seven years and um, everything that you've done. So thank you for joining me and thank sharing. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So before we get into the whole story of what's going on, uh, what people need to know and do about this, Let's just assume that some of our viewers may not have ever heard of chloramine. So what is chloramine? Chloramine is a water disinfectant that is made out of chlorine and ammonia. So it's uh, the, a, common, a mixture of chlorine yeah, and ammonia. Yeah, when you combine chlorine and ammonia, it makes a chemical called chloramine. Okay. And what, why is it that uh, chloramine is being used in some municipalities versus others? Um, why it's... There are many mis municipalities that are switching over to chloramine due to, and it's being driven by an EPA disinfection byproduct rule, mm -hmm. which um, quickly, if you, if you take a chemical disinfectant mm -hmm. and you, it combines with things that already existing in the water, mm -hmm. like in surface water, this is not an issue with well water, mm -hmm. but organic material like algae or bits of decomposing leaves mm -hmm. that fall into the water. Um, it makes other chemicals called disinfection byproducts. Right. And the EPA made a rule recently that two of the disinfection byproducts, trihalomethanes and haloacetic acids, are now required to be lower mm -hmm. maximum levels in municipal water. So um, <clears throat> what the EPA said to all the water utilities all over the country, you know, don't worry about it. If you're out of compliance, just add ammonia to your chlorine feed and you'll be golden. And that m turns into chloramine. Yes. And so what they're saying is there are these chemicals, if you just, if municipalities are just using chlorine, then they have these uh, disinfection byproducts. Not all of them. End. Not all, all of them. All source water is different. Okay. You know? So I actually had thought that um, it was an issue of chlorine dissipating in the water uh, and evaporating. That's a nice time. side thing for the water municipalities. For instance, uh, the Champlain Water District, which serves nine towns, um, when they used chlorine, they had to have a chlorine booster station out in the, you know, out right. in the water district. But with chloramine, they don't have to because it doesn't dissipate. It doesn't dissipate. If you put a bowl of chlorinated water on your counter, the chlorine will dissipate out of it in a couple hours. A bowl of chloraminated water takes weeks. Right. So, just so we we clarify for our viewers. So in the Chittenden County area, what are the water districts or the water so what are the towns, towns serve? The towns that the have towns served by the Champlain Water District are Shelburne, I, I do it in my mind, farthest west and then go east. Shelburne, South Burlington, Winooski, Williston, Essex, Essex Junction, Milton, and Colchester Fire Districts number one and number three. Colchester Fire District number two gets their water from Burlington. Okay, so everyone you mentioned has chloramine in their water. Yes. And so Burlington and then this uh, Colchester. Colchester Fire District number two buys their water from Burlington. And so they're the only ones not on chloramine. That are not Burlington. Right. Okay. Correct. Um, so 
why do we need to care about this? Tell us, let's okay. start with your story, because okay. the personal touch is close, and so. Yes, um, okay. Okay, so three weeks before chloramine came into my water, I got a call from a really good friend who called me up, I said, hello, and she said, did you hear they're adding ammonia to the chlorine? And I was like, what? <laughs> because as a young woman, you know, I'm 63, when I was setting up household, all the elder women in my life said, don't ever mix Clorox and ammonia in the same cleaning bucket. The fumes will kill you. And mm -hmm. they, they were so adamant about it that I, I never forgot it. I was like, I'll never yeah. do that. And to hear that they were adding ammonia to the chlorine in the drinking water, I was just like, what? And uh, so for three weeks, I went on the internet at night after I was done work. And I would just search for the side effects of chloramine, health effects of chloramine, and I couldn't find anything except that um, if you're on dialysis, mm -hmm. you better not have any chloramine in it because it goes into your blood. Yeah. And I think it'll kill you. And it kills fish in tiny concentrations compared to what they put in our drinking chloramine water. Does. Chloramine does. Chloramine does, fish. Yep. And so when it started coming out of your tap, what happened? Well, I, uh, a little bit before, let's, let's, uh, we'll go back, back a up. little bit. Yeah. So in my research every night going, how come I can't find anything on this stuff? There was nothing. Um, my search took me to a meeting agenda webpage for the San Francisco Public Utility Commission. And I went, why did it take me here? And I scrolled down and I saw citizens concerned about chloramine. I'm telling you, the hair rose on my arms. I went, oh man, I had a bad feeling and I think I'm right. And mm -hmm. uh, so I wrote letters because they were addresses and then I got mm -hmm. a call from Denise Johnson Kula, who is the president of Citizens Concerned About Chloramine in the San Francisco Bay Area. They had had chloramine for two years. She almost died in her first shower. She's, she's like in the top 1% of the most severe reaction and she couldn't breathe and sh in the shower and she just slid down and couldn't breathe and somebody knocked on the door and it it made her kick open the shower door and get out mm. and um, you know they she ended up trying to sue because they almost killed her with it but yeah. it didn't go anywhere but it was it was written about a lot in the newspapers yeah when, because this is where they right when they converted to chloramine. So she started hearing from people. Everybody started piping Everybody up. Everybody started finding her and going, same thing's happening to me. And you read this just before? No, no, no. I, yeah, I, so she told me that. Mm -hmm. when, so she called me. And they'd had chlorine, you know, when they, they got my letter, somebody said, you know, uh, somebody's getting it in Vermont in a couple weeks. So she called me up. And we had a two-hour conversation, and she told me what to expect, and it all happened. Mm -hmm. So you got all the same symptoms? I did, yeah. yeah. So uh, chloramine came into my water. I took a really long shower the night before, and then I just couldn't bring myself to take a shower mm -hmm. until I was so dirty I didn't care if I died. <laughs> so I got in the shower, and I took, a sh I took a lukewarm shower. Like she said, it's worse when it's the water's hot. I had the fan on, I had the door open, I made sure that the shower wasn't aerosolizing. She said, you don't want to get the tiny water drops from a spray. You don't want to breathe those in. And, mm -hmm. and I got out of the shower and I looked in the mirror and my eyes were cherry red. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got dressed and downstairs, they were burning severely. Tears were pouring down my cheeks. Mm -hmm. And... I just couldn't believe it. I was like, if, yeah. you know, I knew from Denise that this might happen. And I just thanked my guardian angel to hook me up with her so that I wouldn't take a shit. Because first of all, if my friend Pat hadn't called me, I would think that yeah, you wouldn't have had known. chlorine in the water, you know. And um, so that's what happened to me. So I wrote a, uh, a letter to the editors of all the little towns in the Champlain Water District, you know, the weekly little yeah. papers. sharing what had happened. Sharing what had happened, said, is anything like this going on for anybody else with a contact 
num you know, my phone number right. and an email address. And I started hearing back from so, people. So from there, is that where your activism started? What did, how, how did well, you? Well, you know, I mean, Denise was like, write a letter to the editor, you know, find out if anybody else. I'm like, okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, she said, you want to you do something about this? She was hoping I'd start a group in Vermont. And um, I was like, I don't know. But when I started hearing back from people, you know, by two weeks, I'd heard back from about 20 people. And two of them came out of the woodwork and said, do you want to do something about this? And I went, yeah, OK, let's. Mm -hmm. So we met at a coffee shop, and people concerned about chloramine was born. People concerned about chloramine, so PCAC. Right. And this is your um, kind of was, grassroots organization. Yeah, three of us co-founded, three old ladies. Perfect. <laughs> so what did you what did you three old ladies do? Well, we uh, we started having weekly meetings and trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. um, Denise was telling us what we needed to do, which was to get the word out about the switch mm -hmm. and to you know you know make a flyer like theirs, um, which just gave all the information, what the symptoms are, what you can mm -hmm. expect. Um, you know, who to call if you, you know, she said you guys need to document symptoms um, from people. Mm -hmm. She also said, you know, we wrote letters to the editors describing our symptoms, saying anybody else getting anything like this. Yeah. Because between the three of us, I think we had all three skin symptoms, respiratory symptoms, mm -hmm. and digestive symptoms. And that's actually exactly what I was going to ask you just now, thinking there might be someone watching this and not even realizing that the symptoms that they're having are right. chloramine related. So, yeah. So, so chloramine, respiratory, what's... Respiratory can be, you know, uh, not, uh, you know, the mildest symptoms are like a runny nose, runny eyes, mm -hmm. a dry throat, a catch and, you know, a cough. Yeah. And then... You know, it can go from there to uh, having asthma, severe yeah. asthma-like symptoms, and needing inhalers. Okay. And sort of everything in between. And what about the skin symptoms? What are those like? The skin symptoms can, uh, the mild symptoms are really dry skin. You're like, oh, my skin's so dry, to lesions from head to foot. Mm -hmm. And I, you have some pretty... Uh, Awful shocking pictures. pictures, which we'll show quickly, but yeah. um, I guess we'll get the to those in a minute, symptoms, but the digestive symptoms. Yeah. Digestive symptoms can be like a stomach ache. I have mild all three symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it gives me a stomach ache, but then, you know, I only drink and cook with and brush my teeth with spring water, and I shower in Burlington where there's no chloramine. So you live in South Burlington, and you drive to Burlington to shower. I do. Let's finish the digestive yeah. symptoms. <laughs> okay, digestive symptoms. Tummy ache, growling stomach, um, and then uh, diarrhea, and then bloody diarrhea. Yeah, which can be pretty severe. Really bad. I mean, in all of these three, it can be life-threatening. Right. And it is for a few, some, who knows. Yeah. They've never done the studies. We don't know. So I understand then that part of the work that you started doing with PCAC, people concerned about chloramine, was to get people documenting their symptoms. Yes. And you know, just kind of creating a file. Yes. So Crea we wanted to document as many symptoms as we could. We went into the legislature mm -hmm. and said, "Look, this is what's come happening. on, ban chloramine in Vermont." Can we just show some of your pictures sure. now? Sure, yeah. So this is a fellow who lives uh, from Winooski. The, um, the pictures on the left are what his skin looked like after showering in chloramine for a while. And um, the s pictures on the right are after he stopped, you know, he stopped showering in chloramine at his home. Yeah. And the next slide is also the same man, it's right? It's him. It's his leg and his head. Um, his leg is really, I mean, he really did, it all went away. Yeah. Um, the picture of his head on the, on the far right, there's a little bit of crust there, and after about a month of uh, more, it yeah, was yeah. gone. He, and, you know, he was thrilled that his hair came back. His As hair, you can see, he, had he lost his hair, out. and he just had this yellow, thick, crust helmet on his head. 
and it's look at his skin. I mean, ugh. And then the next picture, I think there's some also someone's arm and ear. Yes, yeah. the arm on the left. We don't have an after picture, but that family moved to Grand Isle, and you know everybody got better. That all his siblings had problems, and the woman on the right has, as you can see, she's got the skin. You know, she's got a bad rash behind her behind ear, her. and uh, there's no after pictures for her because she showers at home and just deals with it. She deals with it. Yeah. And then I think we have a couple pictures of people's legs that it looks like somebody who looks at this, I, I could imagine saying, but that looks like it could be a burn or it could be something else. How, how do they know that it's chloramine? Because when before? they stop exposing themselves, it goes away. It goes away. Yeah. And uh, I think those are all the pictures that we had for I for believe that. so. So, and, and these pictures, what are the, this is? Well, this is, we're jumping ahead a little bit to the, to the solution. Yeah, so we'll show this picture later. Um, so, at once you've got people documenting their before and after, and uh, just even experimenting to see right. if, these symptoms that they were having were actually chloramine related. So I imagine that they would have had to say, all right, let me give this a shot. So once you did that, what was the next thing? How did that evolve from there? Well, we documented about 300 people in the Champlain Water District with skin respiratory and or mm -hmm. um, digestive symptoms. Uh, for some people, they get them right away. For some people, they come in a month, six months, a year. People can develop symptoms in five years. Mm -hmm. Denise's husband was fine, and, yeah. and then he developed symptoms five years and it later. Took a while. It, you know, so it's it's really hard. You know, you can't if you don't get the symptoms right after the switch. It doesn't mean that you're not. And I, I, again, there are no studies mm -hmm. done on this, so everybody's going in the dark. So you documented about three hundred people. We were in the legislature. We tried to get it banned in Vermont. We had. Oh, we had some s hearings in the Senate Health and Welfare Committee, the and we were just stonewalled by yeah. the agencies. And actually, I'd like to just illustrate that a little bit. Um, it was clear that the agencies in Vermont didn't want to get down to the bottom of it and find out what was going on with chloramine. Mm -hmm. They just wanted it to go away. Go and away, meaning you going away? Yeah, kind of. Um, so we got, and we, this was illustrated by public records that we got in 2000. We get them from time to time mm -hmm. to see what they're all doing about chloramine. Yeah. And in 2008, which was like right in the mid legislature heavy work, mm -hmm. <coughs> we got these um, emails between, you know, communication director of the Agency of Natural Resources. Um, public Policy Director of the Vermont Health Department, the de uh, Commissioner of the Vermont Environmental Conservation Agency. Um, and what were they saying to you in these emails? Uh, the Champlain Water District General Manager. These are all between them. Mm -hmm. um, and then a marketing guy working for the Champlain Water District. And. Um, when we were working in the in, in the legislature for a year and a half, we had said, the, the health department was saying, there are tons of studies saying that chloramine is perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. And we'd say, show them which ones, where are mm -hmm. they? <coughs> and they couldn't <coughs> because there aren't any mm -hmm. and there still aren't. And so finally, after a year and a half of that, uh, one of them, the... Uh, the um, what's her name, Joelle, the public policy director for the Vermont Health Department writes all these people mm -hmm. and says, quote, if we don't discuss costs as well as risk, we won't shift the conversation. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to shift the conversation from health risks to it's too expensive to do anything else. Right. We have to use chloramine. Okay. Um, we're not going to win this on health science, quote. We're not mm -hmm. going to win this on health science. And so what you're saying is that they were saying that winning for them, for the legislature, was to 
Mainstream they didn't want the legislature to ban chloramine in Vermont or do anything. Mm -hmm. So they were in the legislature saying, it's perfectly safe. We have a million studies saying it is. You know, so, and nobody's been able to produce the studies, is what you're yet. saying? There's no studies. So why is it, why, why do you think that there, because there haven't been any states banning chloramine anywhere. Yeah, well, you know, Tennessee sure doesn't use it. So Tennessee, so I guess without going all the way out to any other state, why do you think the Vermont legislature doesn't want to move on this? Well, it never got out of committee, and I don't know why, but the committee was willing to throw the suffers under the bus for the sake of convenience for the water operator. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to make the water operators have to do something else. That's so, it's so interesting because, uh, you know, it kind of got pa a parallel kind of movement has been like the GMO movement and right. it's, it's, it's perplexing to see, well, why is the legislature seemingly moving in one area that's so uh, confrontational is just yeah. ripe with issues like right. GMOs, but not do it for I chloramine. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, in one of those hearings, the uh, state toxicologist was sitting at the table with his arms crossed, and the chair of the committee, there was this moment when he was just lunged, like from the other end of the table, yeah. angrily at the state toxicologist saying, why aren't you doing yeah. anything? My phone is ringing off the hook. Yeah. You know, this has never happened before. Yeah. So, Ellen, what's what are you guys working towards? What's the solution that you see that people we can move towards as municipalities, as a community, or what people individually can do? Yes. Okay. So, um, it's really hard to get chloramine out of the water before it's been put in. Mm -hmm. So, my effort is going to other communities in Vermont that are f facing the possibility of having chloramine forced on them by the state. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, the EPA doesn't recommend that you use chloramine. Um, they just say you have to lower the levels of these two disinfection byproducts. We don't care how you do it. So there's a really great, safe, mechanical way to do mm -hmm. it, which is the water utility gets big beds of granulated activated carbon and they bring the water in from their source mm -hmm. for the Champlain Water District and Burlington. Yeah. We use the same source, Lake Champlain. Just put it through beds of granulated, granulated activated carbon, carbon. GAC yeah. I'm going to call it. Yeah. Um, and then it just filters out all those, all those um, organic materials. Mm -hmm. So then you can just hit it with chlorine and it doesn't make those disinfection byproducts. Gotcha. That's all they have to That's do. That's all they have to do. You know, and uh, interestingly, Grand Isle made the decision to do that. Mm -hmm. It's There are 15, yeah, as I said, there are 15 water districts in Vermont that are out of compliance. Um, there's a fa Facebook page. Those communities will be on the Facebook page for and Anybody I have, is, this is the list that we have right yeah, here. Can I, can, I can read off the list. The uh, towns are Alberg Village, Bennington, Burlington, Catamount or Bolton area, uh, the Champlain Water District. Um, Which already has chloramine. Already has chloramine. And it's nine, those nine towns that the I... The nine towns that we yeah. mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the Grand Isle Consolidated District, North Hero, Proctor, Reedsboro, Richford, Rutland City, St. Johnsbury, Swanton, the Tritown Water District, which includes Addison, Bridport, and Shoreham, and Virgen's Panton. Correct. So these are the municipalities that are at risk because they have... Because they're out of compliance with those... They're, out of, compli they're out of compliance with the EPA. Yeah, with the DBP rule, yeah. And so they, they're at risk for having chloramine in their water. Right, because chloramine will lower those. But... So what I, I just really want to say, there are two, there, see, so I work with other people. And yeah. we, when we hear about a water district, especially a Vermont one, we want to go in there and educate the people, yeah. tell them what our experience is, 
and encourage them to push back against chloramine and ask for granulated activated carbon instead. Right. Like That's Grand a Isle. much better system. Like it Grand not Isle only, has done. Yeah, like Grand Isle has done. We yeah. went in there and um, we did educate the citizens in there. And the other thing that happened in Grand Isle was they were lied to by, I mean, there was just this big, unbelievable thing mm -hmm. that their water board and the Vermont Health Department did to um, make sure that the bond vote to spend the money to build infrastructure for the chloramine happened. You know, they had a public meeting and nobody said chloramine at the public meeting. Yeah. And well, and I think the, the, the important point is that if granulated activated carbon is safer than adding ammonia to the water, then you just want to educate people that there's an option that's actually viable. Right. So without necessarily getting into into a bigger, you know, can of worms, right? What do you mean by a bigger well, can of worms? Well, you know, just like if there's a safer option, let's just work to educate people that they can do yes. that they can but choose. But people a have option. to you know, people have to be willing to pay more. But here's the thing, the water boards and the state agencies say to citizens, they did it in Vermont and they do it all over the country, um, yeah, granulated activated GAC is great. You know, it not only takes the organic material out, it, you know, it, you know, do you have any pesticide runoff? So we're actually running out of time. Oh, we have a couple bummer. minutes. So I really want to show the, um, the websites that people can uh, okay. access. So Citizens Concerned About Chloramine is chloramine.org. Which is the California group, the oldest citizens group in the country Wonderful. fighting chloramine. And then the Facebook page that you've created for Chloramine Free Vermont, actually just going onto Facebook and searching for Chloramine Free Vermont will get you to the page. It will. And you have, you're posting on there all of these wonderful YouTube videos where people are giving their one, their personal testimonial as to. We do. I didn't even say that. The, yeah. The CDC came up and we have people testifying to them yeah. videos about their symptoms. So in this last minute, <laughs> since oh you know, we've run out of uh. time. Um, Obviously, people who want to learn more can go to these two websites that we've shown them. They can look. They can find you on Facebook. Um, they can call you up so that you can help them get totally. educated. Totally, I can help them with symptoms. I can help them how to fight. If people find people should go to your water district and find out if they're planning to go to chloramine, and then contact me. Yeah. Because I can really help. Yeah, especially these 15 towns that we mentioned. Yes, and they will be listed on the chloramine free Vermont page. Exactly. If you can't remember it. Yeah, if you're not sure whether your town has chloramine or uh, chlorine, look it up. And if you want to know if you're at risk because you're not in compliance, look it up on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining me, Marilla, Ellen. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for doing this work. And thank you for joining us. I hope that this helped you learn a little bit about chloramine. And if, it's, if you're in a town where you need to take action, you can search Ellen and she'll help you out. Thank you for joining us and have a great time, great day. See you next time. Thank you.